Hello and welcome to another YouTube presentation on behalf of Friendly to Seniors and CARP, that's the Canadian Association of Retired Persons. I'm involved with uh, both of these groups and both of these groups have concerns with respect to something we're going to be discussing with our special guest, Hazel Ecclestone. Welcome to this YouTube presentation that we're going to be dealing with a number of topics, but specifically what's called the KED, which everybody knows now since 2015, I think, the Kingsway Entertainment District. Some are referring to it as the Kingsway Environmental District and others somewhat derogatory terms. Now, a lot of things have happened. We're going to be discussing a number of, of things, but particularly the fact that you and some others are involved and are really concerned about this development and the effect it will have on Sudbury. Now, how did you actually become involved? Um, just through current events, I guess, and um, following the things that are going on in the city, the world, the, you know, in the environment is a huge issue for, for my husband and I, and, um, and uh, for him more the um, economic health of the city or finance financial health of the city. Um, me, it's more, um, I'm more concerned about the environment for sure. It, it's, it's, we've really run, we're running out of time. And uh, although they say, oh, it's not till 2050, um, I'm thinking, geez, I'm 52 and I can't believe it. And how fast 29 years can go by. Actually, we're just about at 28 years already, right? 28 more years Wait, to get it well, the time from 50 to my age, which in the, in the 80s, goes by very, very quickly as well, too, let me tell you. But uh, you are involved with, uh, with, with a number of others. Uh, we're not going to give their full names, but Art and Evan, Patrick and Tom and Ian and Keith and, of course, many, many others uh, in the city that are concerned about the KED. There's a number, of course, who are very supportive of the, of the KED and, and they say, get it done. But... A lot of the rest of us and our group, uh, the Friendly to Seniors group and also the CARP group, in the numerous surveys that have been undertaken by these groups, they mm -hmm. have shown real concern with respect to the big projects. They, uh, they, they, it's, it's felt that uh, the new library and the new art gallery are not needed. But with respect to the KED, our group, we must admit about 25% have said, uh, okay, uh, the Kingsways may be a good location. now." that number seems to be seems to be somewhat uh, in in doubt recently and of course we have the development just a couple of days ago where the mm -hmm. gateway partner has has decided that okay let, let uh, let's put a pause on this how do how do you figure that um I'm I, I'm not sure how they've never really committed uh, at at any point. The only people we've heard that they're 100% committed through are uh, is the developer and the city. Otherwise, I mean, I might have missed something, but they uh, back in January because of COVID and everything else, they said at this time we are not able to commit anything and then we really never heard from gateway again only through the mayor and uh councillor kerwin and um some of the others that insisted that they were 100 percent behind it but but gateway themselves i don't recall do you recall them publicly saying we are coming through on this i i don't recall I think there's always been some question, and I know that uh, Gateway did say that they were somewhat concerned that if a hotel was not part of the KED, yeah. then they would have to reevaluate their other situation. Now, of course, they've come out and said that because of legal actions that may be taking place in an OPP investigation, that they're also uh, not prepared to commit at this particular time to any further development. Now. Of course, uh, it's always possible that uh, uh, that they could change their mind, but I, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. But with respect yeah. to you and uh, the others that you're involved with, there is a petition that now yes. has received. I was just checking this morning. It's like 3,300 uh, and some odd names, uh, which is a significant number. Now, can you tell us a little bit about uh, this a petition? What what 
what is the focus of, of this uh, petition going forward? The focus of this petition is um, to stop the CAD. We see it as a huge mistake of financially, uh, environmentally. It's, uh, we see it as very backward. Um, it's very much a 1980s plan, which, which is why I can see a lot of people not seeing anything wrong with developing an unserviced area. Uh, but now with the, the state of the environment and the realities that are ha coming to be more and more apparent, like with out, out West, throughout the world, the summer, everywhere was, um, there were so many fires. It was um, really devastating. And I think the realities of um, the state of our environment are becoming more and more real. And so I can see that, of course, seniors would start to think, oh, maybe this is something we need to change sooner than later. The, the, um, it, so the, the petition is, was also because we're, we don't see it as a democratic decision and uh, there's been very little public consultation. They keep telling us that there has been, but we really don't see that. And our experience with going around with the petition is that most people um, disagree with the CAD. And, and uh, from our petition, we've had... Uh, over 3,000 signatories already, and and uh, there was another petition that came out that was against us, and they got no more than 475 signatories. And I think it's um, a, an honest representation of how the public feel. So the what people who are for the CAD are are uh, quite uh, emotional, and um, and I mean our side is emotional too, but. Um, they are determined and acting on it, and um, but and then there is the fear of coming on our side to go against that development of other people, which is a real concern. So what we've said is, um, if we cannot stop it, then we think there should be a referendum, and the people should decide. Now, of course, some people have said that referendums can be somewhat. Uh dangerous. We know that Briex in the United Kingdom did not go well. Mm -hmm. So you really need to have uh, an informed uh, public referendum. Do you think that our public is now becoming more informed? There's, I mean, this has generated, I don't know how many stories in the media, uh, TV, radio, and mm -hmm. uh, newspapers. Uh, there, uh, there's a lot of concern. At the same time, we have this going on. There's the homeless situation, the addicted situation, oh, yeah. the number of deaths we have, the fact that the use of the food bank is going up, uh, the COVID situation. So this is all happening at, this, at the same time. And it's, yeah. do, do you think there's a, a lack of focus here or there's-, or there's uh, there, There's a serious disconnect. Are we, are we getting the priorities straight, I guess? No. We're not, we're, and, and there's a real disconnect. I mean, that last council meeting where they were discussing the homeless situation, not one person brought up the fact that all we could hear was that they had no money and that um, the, the feds had offered them uh, quite a, a decent um, amount of money to deal with the urgent matter of the homeless and um, but it was not to be used for capital to me that seems quite reasonable I would expect that of course the feds have three what is it 289 municipalities across the country to deal with so they have to um, give a bit to everybody because everybody's experiencing the same situation and um, and so then of course the municipalities also have to um, put up some money for capital and I think it's very clear they need to you know the building that they were talking about the that seemed perfect for for what we needed um but the owner wanted to sell it rather than uh lease it which i think is okay so let's buy it you've got all that money sitting there we're paying two percent two point six percent tax i mean interest on that loan 205 million dollars can we actually use it for something we're, so that's millions of dollars we're paying in interest every year already and um we can't afford that if we're not going to be using it for something 
um, important and environmental. And we need to get on on track with um, acting on our environmental commitments and then also on track with dealing with the real issues um, of the homeless, right? Because we haven't and that's why there's so many. I know that uh, seniors who we represent are quite concerned about taxation and the levels of taxation, which I've considered mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, how, how, how do people who are in fixed income uh, with very, very low rates of increase on their, on their, on their if, if they even have a pension, but the OAS and the CPP, of course, goes up, but very small amounts compared to the amount of taxation increases within uh, the municipality. So, so, so that's where a lot of seniors are concerned. And also the fact that it seems like these large projects may be underfinanced even to start off with. Yes, I think so. I, we're, we're really digging a hole that's uh, maybe unnecessary. I, I mean, the, the, the federal government, the, even I think the province, I'm not sure Ford's a little bit backward on these issues too, but um, the federal government has been offering numerous incentives to become more environmental, to become, to try to um, become better educated and uh, deal with the root issues, causes of homelessness. Um, we need to deal with the whole opioid crisis. This is 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 massive. It's way bigger than than COVID even. And um, we just, they just seem to, our city council seems to not want to. I mean, look at how they've handled this. They've, um, they have, they had the woman, the professor at Laurentian University, who's done 20 years of research into this. And her I mean, I bet you the guy they hired to come in has read her work. And um, so it's a little bit infuriating because she was offering up her work. And um, and then there's uh, Bob Johnston and, and Carrie, and they are so knowledgeable about this whole thing. And they, the city doesn't care to hear what they have to say because they've heard what they've said and they don't want to hear it. So they've gone to someone else and paid huge money for this guy to come up here and do his little study. But I'm, I'm sh I am I'm mean, if he's at all responsible, he would have been reading our professor's uh, research on, on it. And, um, and, and they don't want to hear him either. And the, I mean, that whole idea, I mean, Jocelyn Laundry Altman put out there as putting a cap as though you can just, um, control the number of people uh, down and out is so ridiculous. And, and, but that is, I'm, I'm sure Jocelyn means well, but th it just spelt out just how ignorant they are. And they have no, they have no intentions of, um, of educating themselves any further. And to the point where it was it Leduc put up his hands and said, I, I'm so disappointed and I guess we've failed. And they're ready to throw in the towel, that's it. <laughs> so it's very, um, like I mean, it's sort of comical in the purest uh, definition of comic comedy, but um, it's very frustrating too because nobody mentioned that, well, maybe we're going to have to take a few million out of that 205 million and actually deal with what deal with this. And, it, and then the idea also that um, uh, they, they seem to think that Sudbury has such great services and that's why there's so many here. No, the homeless are a very transient population. Right. I mean, they 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 probably go from Sudbury to North Bay. Some of them, I'm sure, are trying to get out to Vancouver all the time, you know, in around September or end of August. You know, they're 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 not um, I they, they don't have a home. So they're they're free to move here, there and everywhere. And they do. So th the fact that a lot of them are not from Sudbury is not doesn't really mean anything i mean how many people there's a lot of people in Sudbury that are just here to work or for whatever other reason and um many people don't stay in Sudbury, right there's uh 
and 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 most of our young people do leave sadly and and um some come back but uh a lot don't most don't i i don't have that many friends from high school here anymore are you uh you are native born and bred as it were I was born in Sudbury, but my parents uh, were not. They were from Ireland, so so I am first generation. Yeah. So we're no, talking. Uh, yeah, we're talking. Born here. Yeah, Hazel Ecclestone, as you can see on our screen there, Hazel is with us talking about various issues in Sudbury, and one of them that really came up in the in the paper. This is a copy right here. Addie Key Group, of which you're involved. Angry council defers petition. Now, this is about, uh, yeah. about a week ago. And uh, yeah. uh, so, uh, so what happened? And uh, what are you hoping for? And, and let's say it does go before council. Is there going to be? I mean, that's over three thousand, close to three thousand five hundred people with uh, the online petition and paper petition. Uh, what does what does what does council expect? What do you expect council to do with this? Um, well, I I would expect they they try to downplay it and say, oh, that's not that many or. But it, for a petition, it actually is quite a lot. And it is uh, one of the largest petitions um, that's been presented to council. And um, to get any, I mean, Sudbury is so disconnected just physically and, um, and, and then especially since this COVID, people are completely, you know, isolated. And um, so to get 3000 signatures, I think is is uh, or over 3000 is significant. And um, some of those are from have um, out of the country even uh, uh, addresses, but one of them is um, one woman I know who's just come here from Colombia in in January and she signed and she intends her and her family intend to stay here there. Um, she signed, but her I, I noticed on the petition that her address is Colombia still. So there's um, some misleading things like that, that oh people are just signing it for whatever, but it, they're not. And I recognize most of the names. Well, I know that the there's a. It's true that there's there's many expatriates, I guess you might call them, uh, former Sudbarians who are away, who are disturbed to see what's happening in their community. And if I can take a quote here from the paper, that uh, uh, your group, of which you're a member, said that uh, the KED is, if I can quote here. A cynical scam perpetrated by a local property developer to trick the people of Sudbury into paying more than a hundred million to essentially have his unsaleable acres by the dump serviced with hydro water and sewers. Uh, so, yeah. so that's pretty pretty strong. But do you stand by that, Hazel? Um, oh yes, I do. I do one hundred percent. And I and um, it would be fine if it were. 40 years ago, but it's not. And even like now that we know what we know and that the city has signed the seat, the community energy emissions plan. And, and um, at the scene, it's so, um, how do we hold them accountable? It's, it's, it's so frustrating. You know, they, they have to start walking the talk. Like this is not uh, some people will say, oh, it's just so political. It's not political. This is a very serious mistake we're about to make. And um, and and if it, if it tips, which I think it will, tips the scale for Ramsey Lake, uh, how much is that going to cost us? And then we're, we're going to be so in debt from this KED thing. And then um, the big worry now, too, is that Gateway doesn't seem um, terribly committed to it. And no, and, and that, that's another um, point. There are no contracts. Nothing is signed. There are no surety bonds, which would be the normal um, process in something like this. Uh, we are completely out on a limb. And why would Gateway or any other developer uh, pony up any money now? Because if it's going to be done for them, why would they give the money? Like it's almost going to be charity 
of them to come in at all anymore. And so, so then are these libraries going to be built? I mean, I'm not sure. I I prefer to see our uh, like as the feds are trying to encourage and 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 giving quite sizable incentives towards us um, redoing our older buildings um, to make them more energy efficient. You know, because the greenest building is one that already exists is the best plan to to do. Then why are we not taking advantage of those incentives? For two, and um, we're we're looking at there's not going to be any money left for the libraries or for anything else if we go ahead with this ked because it's I, I I think we're going to end up paying for everything it looks like and um, and and probably take up the whole two hundred million dollars <laughs> so we will be without um anything and and we we have the environment we have so many other more pressing issues than um a brand new casino standalone casino out on our water table destroying our lake they none of this makes sense none of this makes sense so you and know they, uh, you yeah. have you have obviously done you know a lot of research i've, I've been impressed by the research now uh you are not a senior, obviously, but actually you could join CARP because I think our, our <laughs> we, 45, you can join our CARP oh. organization. <laughs> but I've, I've, I've been, uh, on, on one hand, we have you and, and, and the people you're associated with, and they have done an amazing amount of material. This is just 12 reasons to rethink the kid. This is a lot of work that, that, that a lot of people have done. And for those that support the CAD, generally what we hear is that it's time we move forward. We have to be a modern city. It's going to create a lot of uh, extra jobs. And, uh, and uh, well, I, uh, I think that's about it. But uh, no, they, don't. they want to get away from the needles. I, some of the comments uh, are terrible. Uh, they don't want to be around the needles or um, the crackheads is is quote unquote this is incredibly ignorant and this is horrifying um perspective to think that you can solve anything by just walking away from that situation is so wrong and also excuse me but the um the poor a lot of them take the bus or hitchhike to downtown they live in the outer a lot of them live in the outlying areas of Sudbury. So this, this situation downtown, which is not uncommon, it's where, you know, vulnerable people do, um, do go to because there are certain services available to them down there. To, to think that you can just up and alienate them completely is, uh, so, is so wrong. Uh, it's not going to help anything. It will actually make the whole thing even worse. And um, like some people are saying, put the homeless in the arena. I, I don't think it's really designed for anything like that. And um, it, it, it doesn't make sense. So we need to um, take a look at all of this much more seriously. There's many examples throughout the world of, um, of uh, righting the wrongs of the 80s, 90s, and um, stopping the urban sprawl and re, uh, br bringing back the downtowns, which is really the, the only way to bring up, to, to start, like each community in Sudbury could have a nice walkable center right and we could have trains going uh, that linking all of us up passenger rail and um this this is all doable and this is uh most necessary and we have to do it like we have no choice 28 years we have 28 years to get to zero emissions and Sudbury has to do it too we're not yeah well some of us right? of course uh, some of us don't have 28 years uh, but uh, but our seniors are very concerned about the young, you know, our, our children and our grandchildren. And 
Uh, how about the young people you know? Is there is there a general concern there? Yeah, well, there is, but they're a little bit, um, you know, the young are think that they're invincible, right? So, uh, I mean, I have five uh, kids, and um, they are concerned. They there's a sometimes there's a bit of a disconnect as as there is for all of us, but um, the we we will they are very much concerned but my uh, my husband and I Evan and I are very concerned for them obviously we don't want to leave them in a mess like our 10 year old is already blaming us for everything <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well look at we only have a few minutes left so that's uh, sort of summing it up here we we have the situation now where it looks like we're on a pause with uh, with the development and of course, the petition we hope is going to be presented uh, to, to council. If you had something to say to council, you know, if uh, if it were possible to speak before council, and it, it's sort of difficult for ordinary citizens to do that, it, it would seem recently. But if you had the chance and uh, sort of representing uh, uh, your group and then the many others in the community, we know that just judging from letters to the editor and that sort of thing, that. It's, it's, it's well over 90% of the people who are concerned about this development. If you had the opportunity to speak before council, uh, what do you think you'd say? I'd say uh, it, it is time we act. And please, can you please take this seriously? The, uh, the SEEP document that you signed in February, um, we, you need to be held accountable, you need to take it seriously, and we need to start acting on these promises you've made to us and we've made to each other. We need to hold each other accountable and move forward on this. How about those who are so adamantly supportive of, uh, of this development, regardless of, of what's taken place? Uh, what do you say to them? Well, there is no proof of anything they're promising. It doesn't make sense. Even Gateway in their studies show that there is no tourism through these local casinos. The, the, the money is drained from the immediate community and uh, we get very little of it. We get very little benefit of it. And it's, it's not, um, it's, it is no party actually and i i it it's i don't even it's how do you um how do you fight that sort of thing because their arguments are completely backed by nothing but uh wishful thinking. it certainly is frustrating uh yeah. are you uh, do you do you have any uh Confidence? Are you are you you know even somewhat up you know optimistic that we'll uh, be taking a better look at this? Well, our fr a friend of ours who is a lawyer, um, he says you have to um, believe that the the good, the right outweighs eventually. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna. Uh, so. I'm saying for that, but I hope it won't be too late because it's already too late, right? We're already too late. They keep saying that and Greta keeps telling us that. And, you know, this whole cop thing was a bit um, frustrating. There was a great article um, by one of the Native women that went to, young Native women that went to cop and she was saying how she was shocked, taken aback by how patriarchal, how, um, how uh, colonial um, the structure of the whole meeting was. And she was, she thought it was a bit, um, how are we supposed to get anywhere when they're applying the same mistakes, you know, the same structure of business, of um, meeting, sit down and listen, we'll tell you what you're going to um, think and all the rest of it, rather than people really coming together and and speaking well, their I think piece. That, I think you'll be interested. We hope to be holding a YouTube talk with uh, a Sudburyan who's written an interesting book called From Evolution to Extinction, A Primer on Global oh. Warming. And uh, we hope to be doing that shortly. He's a Sudbury author and it's a fantastic book. We'll be talking to him uh, shortly and uh, hopefully be able to uh, send out 
that link to, the, to that YouTube as well, too. But Hazel Ecclestone, thank you very much for joining us. Wow, it's, thank uh, you. it's been great. Uh, we, we, we thought it would be, uh, we, we know there's a lot of guys that are associated with it, and uh, but uh, you're, the, you're the face of the, of the, the other side of the equation, if you put it that way. <laughs> Uh, you, you have to be politically correct nowadays, right? It's very, uh, we, we thought it would be good to have you because of your age and your concern and, uh, and, and the fact that you're also representing, uh, you know, so many uh, that, uh, that want to see the Sud Sudbury City Council get their priorities uh, in order. So we hope that our recording has been okay and, uh, and uh, we'll be in touch. Once again, Hazel, thank okay. you very much. Thank you.